Welcome to vSIM, the nursing virtual simulator developed by Walters Kluwer Health and Lairdell Medical. This video will teach you to navigate the virtual simulations. You work as a nurse in a simulated hospital setting. Just as in real life, your goal is to assess and care for the patients as well as you can in accordance with evidence-based, quality, and safety standards for nurses, as well as the provider's orders. The electronic health record is divided into tabbed sections and contains useful background information on the patient, provider's orders, and a record of all interventions implemented. In the MAR tab, you'll see an overview of the administration of drugs and fluids. In the Orders tab, you'll find all orders given by the provider. You'll also need to consult the orders before administering a drug. If new orders are given during the scenario, they will be added to the Orders tab. The patient log tracks all interventions you've performed. Close the electronic health record by clicking the round button at the bottom of the record. Hi, I'm Amy. I'll be your primary nurse today. On the left side of the screen, you'll see the patient and the nurse in the healthcare setting. If you roll the mouse over the picture, you will be able to pause the simulation. Pausing the scenario can be useful if you need a break or when searching for an action, as it doesn't use up scenario time. Next to the pause button is the fast forward button, which allows you to skip one minute of scenario time. This feature could be relevant when monitoring a patient over time. Below the patient picture, there is a timer, which tells you the time of day in the scenario. You'll also see a monitor and buttons to open the electronic health record, call the provider, and hand off the patient. On the right side of the screen, you'll find a tabbed menu with a selection of actions and communication options that you can use to assess and care for the patient. The Safety Measures tab is the first tab available. This tab contains actions useful for most patients, such as washing your hands and identifying the patient. Please state your name and date of birth. My name is Vincent Brody. I was born on June 20th. Once you have clicked an action, the nurse will perform the chosen action and await your next choice of action. Everything matches. Clicking an action automatically starts the simulation and scenario time again if the scenario is paused. Also notice that you can't cancel an action like this once you have started it. Let's have a look at the next tab. The Communication tab contains actions to call for advice or assistance and to communicate with the patient. Calling for assistance may be needed when a situation deteriorates or when you need to report back if you have discovered something that in your opinion changes the priorities for treatment of the patient. In the Communication tab, you will also be able to provide patient education related to the current health problem or interventions and ask the patient questions. Notice that questions are grouped under headings for different question categories, such as pain assessment and current illness. Under each Ask Questions heading, you can select from a list of relevant questions that you can ask the patient. <coughs> are you allergic to anything? No, I'm not allergic to anything. Let's look at the next tab. The Assessment tab contains all assessment actions, such as a head-to-toe assessment, auscultation, and vital signs, as well as more focused assessments. To examine the patient, simply roll the mouse over the silhouette on the right and click the area to examine. Let me take a look. Notice that the nurse automatically models good okay. communication skills before and after an action is performed. There is normal skin turgor. Now let's practice obtaining a three-lead ECG. Click the cardiovascular assessments heading. Now click the ECG monitoring action. I'm going to attach heart monitor pads to your chest. So when the ECG is attached, notice how the monitor below the patient picture uh, okay. begins to display information. Below the Assessment tab, you'll find the Interventions tab. The Interventions tab contains groups of actions that you can use when caring for the patient, such as respiratory and cardiovascular interventions. For example, if a patient requires oxygen therapy, you will find associated actions on the Respiratory tab under Ventilation and Oxygen Therapy. When using an oxygen device, it's important to set the rate of the oxygen delivered. When clicking the Attach Nasal Cannula action, notice that the action became active. This indicates that the Attach Nasal Cannula action is continuously active. In other words, it will continue until you choose to stop it. To stop a continuous action, simply click that action again. Now, click the Cardiovascular Interventions heading. 
Cardiovascular interventions include CPR and the use of an automated external defibrillator, AED, if the patient's condition deteriorates. Let's see how you would apply this device. First, turn on the AED. Attach pads to patient's bare chest. Follow the instructions from the AED by clicking Attach Shock Pads. Do not touch the patient. Click Stand Clear. Analyzing Stand heart clear. <coughs> no shock needed. In this case, there was no need to press the shock button. Turn off the AED. In the Drugs and IV Management tab, you will find actions related to administering fluids and medications. First, click the Manage IV Access and Active Drugs heading. On the silhouette, select the location where you want to obtain IV access. I'm going to insert an IV into your arm. <coughs> click the IV site shown on the right arm to insert the IV there. Next, click the Drugs and Fluids heading. Here, you select the drug, the route of administration, and the dosage to administer. First, select the drug. Then, select the route. In the last box, you get an overview of the drug administration and set the dosage. Click the Provider's Orders action. If you roll over the edges of the electronic health record, a zoom icon appears over the record. The zoom action will allow you to zoom in or out on the electric health record. In the Provider's Orders, you should verify the drug, route, and dosage before administering a drug. Check if there is an exact match between the Provider's Orders and the drug selection. Finally, to administer the drug or fluid, you click the Administer action. An infusion of 100 potassium Click the Manage IV Access and Active Drugs heading again. You'll notice that the silhouette now shows the active drugs that are infusing. To stop a running nebulizer or infusion, First, click the drug box next to the silhouette. Clicking the drug box takes you to the drug administration selection. Finally, click the active administer action to stop the saline infusion. Under the Tests and Diagnostics tab, you'll find actions related to diagnostic tests and radiology. After the result has been analyzed, the electronic health record icon will start flashing to indicate that new information has been added to the record. You can refer back to the electronic health record as many times as needed. The top tab is labeled Search. Open the Search tab by clicking the Search tab or by simply typing on the keyboard. If you are having difficulty finding a certain action, you can use the Search tab to look for it. For example, if you want to assess the patient's ability to breathe, you can type Breathing to find that action. The search results will display a list of actions as well as a list of patient questions related to breathing. Clicking the link in the search results will take you to the relevant tab and heading, and the action will be highlighted for your convenience. Now click the Assess Respiration action to perform this action. He is breathing at 33 breaths per minute. There are a few audible wheezes in the chest. The chest is not moving very well. Next to the electronic health record action in the lower left corner, you'll find the patient handoff action. When you think you have done all you can to assess and care for the patient's current health concern, you should end the scenario. At the end of the scenario, you'll see a feedback screen that provides a detailed summary of the patient care you provided, feedback on the appropriateness of your actions for this patient, and your final score. On the left side of the feedback screen, you'll see the five main opportunities for improvement. If you scroll over the entries in this list, you can see the context of those main opportunities in the log to the right. You can choose to see the log in either basic view or detailed view, depending on the level of details you seek. You can also click the hyperlinks or SmartSense links in the feedback log to read references in your course materials to better understand the rationale for correct and incorrect actions. Please take the time to review the feedback thoroughly and consult your course materials for further explanation or remediation. Now that you understand how to navigate this program, focus on doing your best to assess the patient and implement appropriate interventions. Feel free to repeat a scenario as many times as you'd like. You are now ready to see your next patient. This time you are on your own. If you need a review, you may access this tutorial again. Good luck!